Hello, and today I would like to give you a quick introduction into point clouds inside Houdini. So there are a few essential functions you'll need to know before starting with point clouds, and that's PC open, which opens a point cloud file, PC filter, which averages the values inside the entire point cloud. So uh, this will essentially just give you an average value. So then the PC, uh, PC import, which uh, imports a current value of that current point inside that point cloud, which is usually used with uh, PC iterate because you're, you're usually iterating over each of those points inside a point cloud and you would like to import that data from that current point you're iterating over. Then PC iterate, I think I already explained that, and a PC close, which closes the point cloud, which saves up some memory. Then uh, I think I would like to go over this example here first, which is just a grid with points and a single point here. So. A PC open takes few uh, parameters, which is the uh, input inside the wrangle, which is going to be the second one, our scattered points here, position and a position as a string and then as an attribute. And then it requires the radius, which is in this case uh, one, and max points, which is the maximum amount of points that a point cloud can contain. And this is the radius uh, in which the uh, point cloud exists from that original point we're creating a point cloud from. from in, so in this case, we have just a single point and we're opening a point cloud on this point, which uh, essentially contains points that are in a radius of one of this point, if that makes sense. So if I add a, another point here, now we essentially have two different point clouds. So uh, I'll move this back again, or I'll remove that point. And what I would like to talk about here is the handle. So the handle is just a integer number. It just refers to the uh, point cloud file. So nothing to worry about. The only way to really, uh, it's only useful for all the PC uh, functions to be able to locate the type of, or to locate the uh, point cloud you're working with. So uh, here I have a while a function and inside a PC iterate. That's the one I was talking about here. So here I'm writing while and inside I have a PC iterate and inside PC iterate you want to write the handle of a point cloud you want to iterate over. So currently this function will iterate over all of the points inside a point cloud. So PC import will import a value or that current value of that uh, point we're iterating over. So here I'm writing the handle again the uh, attribute I'm trying to import in, and here you're writing the uh, variable where to store the attribute. So here I created an empty variable, which is a vector because I'm importing a position. Then what I'm trying to do here is I'm creating a point. I'm creating the point on my, or on the first input, and I want to have it, or this is its position here. So what I'm essentially doing is that I am retrieving the position of each point inside my point cloud that has been created by this point here. And I'm creating a second point or a clone point, uh, which has the same position as the point inside a point cloud. And this way I can visualize all the points that are actually inside a point cloud here. Maybe I could actually uh, even make their... Um, CD. Let's say set. So right now we can see that only the uh, original point is red and all the other are white, which or maybe a better way would be to just write a color here. Like so. This would be a much simpler way to, of doing it. Like that. And uh, now we can see that all the other white points are just points that were inside our point cloud. If I, let's say, make this 50 and I play with the radius, we can see that we have more and less points. So then I'm just closing the point cloud and I'm specifying which uh, point cloud file I'm trying to close. So uh, this is a much more simple example here, uh, this one, but I'm just creating a grid where I have just co uh, a color here. And what I'm doing here, I'm opening a point cloud and I'm PC filtering a value or a see the attribute in this case uh, and again I'm specifying the handle and I'm setting that to be my CD and as you can see my point in here currently or sorry my original point is white but it changes its color if I visualize this it's because it actually grabs the data of my uh, 
of the uh, point cloud points, as you can see. Maybe actually I should make this smaller a bit. Yeah, like that. And we can see now it's orange. Maybe it's harder to see, but you can see here it's orange. And this way you can essentially filter uh, the values inside a point cloud and get a resulting value. Okay, so the last thing I actually forgot to mention inside the PC iterate. So as you are familiar with while loops, while loops will uh, loop forever until they don't come or until the statement inside doesn't return a false value. So the PC iterate until there is a point to iterate over will return one, so true. And as soon as there are no points to iterate over, the PC, PC iterate will return a value of zero. So since we covered that, I think we can go on the last example, which I won't cover uh, in full depth, but here I just have scattered some points, a sphere, and uh, this is the code here. And what it does, maybe just show, I can show you. So if I rotate this, it creates an interesting animation or and what essentially is going on here is that I am creating for each of those points on this grid a point cloud and most of these points around here have point clouds that are empty because I'm opening the point cloud on this sphere so yeah they're too far away and what I'm trying to do here is that I am opening the point cloud here and I'm trying to determine which point on this sphere is the closest one to this point here. And then if I find that point, I want to connect it with. Just so you understand, if I uh, I'll make this... Um, some of those points, okay, this is a good example. They're connected to a single point or two of those points are connected to uh, uh, this point twice. So you can see that it's actually true because some of the points can be, can determine that the same point is the closest one to them, if that makes sense. So yeah, uh, I'll go over it. I'm just creating some, uh, I'm creating the point cloud here. Then I'm creating some variables, which is going to be the, um, the position of each point. And then I'm creating the, um, the minimum distance to start my if function inside the loop. So I'm just taking the radius and adding one just to be sure that it always passes through the first iteration. Uh, then I'm taking the creating a vector, which will be my second position variable. And then I'm creating a integer P2, which I actually won't be even using so I can uh, disable it. And then I'm creating an attribute, which is going to be an active and the reason why I'm creating this, I want to determine which points actually ran through that loop and which haven't. So this way I'm filtering the points which are outside here and have no points which are inside this or have no point inside their point cloud. And that way here in the if function, I can determine which points actually did have something in their point cloud. Here I'm just determining which of the points are is the closest one. Here I'm importing that position. And here I'm just creating a primitive, which is going to be a polyline time. And then I'm just adding a point, which if you can see here, I'm creating a separate point on that sphere. And then I'm just creating two vert vertices or vertex, which are going to be a vertices. So I hope you learned something new and I hope this made sense. Of course, you can go and revisit this in a project file. It is a more complex setup, but it's an interesting uh, way of, of working with point clouds or it's an interesting thing, which would be maybe harder to repeat with a note. Uh, and I'll see you again with a new video. Bye bye.